Heavenly Father, it is in the precious name of our Lord Jesus that we bow before just now, and we thank Thee, Lord, for all the help given to the boys and girls and to the ladies and to everyone tonight who is taking part. We thank You, Lord, for the theme of their singing tonight, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank Thee tonight that the Lord Jesus is the center theme to the gospel. He's the center theme tonight to all life, and He's the center theme tonight of our message here this evening. So, Father, we just pray, give us all a listening ear, and Lord, give us all tonight an attentive heart, for we ask it in our Savior's name. Amen. And amen. As we read tonight the many accounts from the Scriptures concerning the Christmas message, you will notice this evening that there are many different kinds of characters that make up the Christmas story, isn't there? You have tonight Mary and Joseph, of course, the two that God chose who we've been looking at this morning. God has been speaking to us this morning. The couple God chose in bringing His only begotten Son into this world through the virgin birth. Then, of course, we have the angel. You remember the angel as he they, they brought the good news to the, the shepherds who were abiding in the fields watching over their flock by night. Yes, you've got the shepherds. You've got the wise men. And, of course, you've got Herod and the Lord Jesus Christ. But there's one more, there's one more tonight character that God tonight wants to speak to us through. And tonight that character is a man known as the innkeeper. You know, friends, from this week onwards, we're going to have all the nativity plays uh, throughout our schools uh, that tells the Christmas message. And you know, there's one character I love to play was the innkeeper. And the reason why I love to play the innkeeper was there wasn't too many lines you had to learn. All you had to learn was the two words, no room. And I still got it wrong. But you know, boy, you know, everyone this evening, God wants to speak to us tonight through the person as the innkeeper. He's the person tonight. He's the one character out of the whole Christmas story that is played by a lot of people. I'm sure tonight there's someone in this meeting tonight, and you reenact the innkeeper's part in the nativity play. Because this evening, first of all, God wants you to see tonight this man's door. This man's door tonight that was knocked. Here's one man tonight, and I believe you tonight are the mirror image of this man. This man tonight in the Christmas story was a man tonight who had a golden opportunity. This man known as the innkeeper tonight had this golden opportunity because tonight, this man's door was knocked. On that starry night so long ago, a knock came to this man's door. It was no ordinary knock. It was a knock that was heard. Mary and Joseph had arrived great with child, but outside this man's door tonight, was, was the most important person there could ever be. Outside this man's door was the Lord Jesus Christ in the womb of the Virgin Mary. This man tonight, his door was knocked. It was tonight for him an opportunity that was not to be missed. But as I said tonight, it was a knock that was heard. It was a knock tonight 
that brought this man to the attention to come to the door. I wonder tonight, am I speaking to someone? You've heard the knock. Perhaps you've heard the knock many times. Many times the door of your heart has been knocked. But listen, God has many ways. God has many means. And God has many methods in knocking the door of a sinner's heart. Sometimes when God knocks, God has to knock loud for us to hear. I remember preaching at a gospel mission, May 2010. Away in the middle of nowhere, it was in a tent mission, away up in the back end of Bally Martin. And there was a man who was at that mission that night, and the only thing he can remember me saying that night was sometimes God, sometimes God must put a man on his back to get him to look up. About three months after that mission was over, this man was traveling in a lorry down the West Link. A wheel blew out and the man's lorry went out of control. And one of the crash barrier railings come through the door and through his leg and severed his leg. The man was unconscious for two days. He was unconscious for two days. When the man came round, do you know the first thing he thought? He says, God must put me in my back to get me to look up. And you want to know something? That man gave his life to the Lord in the Royal Victoria Hospital. And you know, friend, tonight, listen to me. God has ways in getting through, and God has many ways to knock upon the heart's door. This man's door was knocked tonight. And the Bible says in Revelation 3 and verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man, boys, I love that bit, if any man, no matter who he is, what he is, where he is, if any man, Here's my voice, and opens the door. I will come in to him. My friend tonight, that's the message of the wonderful message of the gospel. And I wonder tonight, is God speaking to some heart? God's bringing you back to a circumstance in your life. God's bringing you back to a situation where you were awakened to your senses, perhaps through some circumstances. God has means, and God has methods in knocking tonight for you to hear. This man's door that was knocked. Secondly, this man's decision that was made. Here's a picture tonight, this man tonight. The innkeeper is a picture just like so many, perhaps, in this meeting this evening. Oh, yes, perhaps in many days gone by, you have heard that knock. In days gone by, you have been almost persuaded now to believe. There was nights you perhaps sat in the lifeboat mission, night in and night out, and perhaps like Felix, you trembled at the very thought that you may die without Christ, at the very thought if the Lord Jesus came back to the air and the church was raptured and you were to be left behind. Oh yes, you trembled. You trembled. And friend, perhaps like, like a group of old, you left meetings and you shook Bertie's hand and, out, and you almost said to Bertie, Bertie, listen, almost, almost I'm persuaded to be a Christian. You know, this man's door was knocked, but then there was this man's decision that was made. He said to them that night, no room in here, no room. 
Oh, there was room for business and room for pleasure, but for Christ, the crucified, not a place can he enter tonight in your heart for which he died. Oh, why, there was room for the crowd, but there was no room for Christ. My friend, is this you tonight? You have room for everything. You have room for anything. But you have no room tonight in your heart for which Christ has died. You know, friend, tonight, listen to me. I want you to know that the Lord Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, came into this world to seek you. He came into this world to save you. He didn't come into this world to start a new religion. My goodness me, there's enough religions in the world before he came. He didn't come in to start a religion. He came into the world to save sinners. He came into the world to die for sinners. He came into the world to shed his blood for sinners. He came into the world to die for you, love. And he came into the world to die for me. Glory to God. And my friend, this evening, listen. Does it not touch you tonight that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life? And my friend, I want to take you for a moment. I want you to take you for a moment to Bethlehem stable. Come with me tonight in your mind's eye, and let's come over and look into this manger, and look at the tiny babe that lay within that manger. Look at his tiny hands. Look at his tiny face. Look at his tiny feet. And to think tonight that the babe that lay in that little manger and to think, listen to me, to think tonight that that little brow one day would bear an awful crown of thorns. To think tonight that those little hands would be nailed to an old rugged cross. To think tonight that those little feet, yes, to think tonight that that little body one day would be bruised and battered and that little visage would be marred more than any other man. He suffered the just for us, the unjust. And that little babe of Bethlehem would one day become the Christ of Calvary, would come one day, sinner friend, as your substitute, would become one day the one who would occupy Calvary's cross for you, I, and for me. And you know, friend, this evening, listen to me. In that manger so long ago, there comes three messages. From that manger, the first message is, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The second message that comes from the manger tonight is this. God so loved the world that he gave, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The third message that comes from the manger is this one. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Friend, tonight listen to me. God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Friend, tonight, here's the message of Christmas. Here's the real meaning behind Christmas. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. You know, friend, tonight, if you're not saved in this meeting, you better realize and wake up very shortly because, friend, you're lost. And my friend, you know, this country is plagued and has been almost damned with two expressions. People say, oh, I was born a Protestant, and I was born a Catholic. Listen, in God's eyes, there's no such thing as a Protestant. In God's eyes, there's no such thing as a Catholic. In God's eyes, there's the saved, and there's the lost. In God's eyes, there's no orange. In God's eyes, there's no green. You're either black with sin or white being washed in the blood of the Lamb. And friend, that's how God sees Ulster. God doesn't see a north and a south. 
God sees tonight, my friend, the Emerald Green Isle that is plagued with sin. And friend, all he sees is the saved and the lost. Tell me this tonight, on what side of the fence are you on? I'm not talking about Catholic and Protestants. I'm not talking about orange and green. I'm talking about saved or lost. What say tonight? Listen to me. Do you know the only difference between you and me is? The only difference between you and me is I have been to Jesus for the cleansing power. That's it. I'm not any better than you. Never thought I was, never think I will be. Maybe you're a better person than me. But the only difference is, friend, I have recognized and I have realized that I was a sinner in God's sight, and I heard the message. I heard the message through the preaching of a Church of Ireland minister. I heard the message, John 14 and verse 6, where the Lord Jesus says, I am the way the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. And that night the penny dropped. You know what I mean, the penny dropped? For some of you people, maybe it's the, th the thruppany bit dropped. Well, for me it was the penny. I'm still in the, oh, the, the newer money. The penny dropped, and I realized, you know something? I can't get into heaven unless I have the Lord Jesus in my heart. For the first time I realized, my church can't save me. Do you know there's a whole pile of people in the north of Ireland tonight who believe their church can save them, their clergyman can forgive them, their pastor can pardon them? Not a bit of it. There's only one Savior tonight, and that's the Lord Jesus. God sent His Son into the world to be the Savior of the world. And my friend, do you know the lovely we thought about that text is? You know the wee thought is? The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of George McConnell. That's it. That's it. The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of George McConnell. Do you want to know a better story? The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of you. My friend, tonight, listen to me. Listen to me. Tonight you may be a lost sinner, but that's not the gospel story in a nutshell tonight, because tonight you're a loved sinner. Friend, God loves sinners tonight. You know, the gospel says, He is the friend of sinners. You know, friend, tonight, listen to me. It doesn't matter who we are, what we are, where we are, what we've done. He died on that cross for you. He died the sinner's death. I, he died your death, and he died my death. And through the sacrificial shedding of His precious blood, I want you to know tonight there's cleansing from every stain. And maybe tonight to your heart He's saying to you, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And with my friend tonight, this man had a decision to make. His decision was whether to open the door or close the door. And this man tonight closed the door. This man's door that was knocked. This man's decision that was made finally. This man's deadline that was crossed. What do I mean? This man's deadline that was crossed. That night, when his door was knocked, it was never, never to be knocked again. A whole pile of people believe, oh, I'll get saved whenever I like. When I think I'm dying, I'll say a wee, listen, did you know tonight there was people who died who never give their soul one thought? People at one time who sat in gospel meetings, people who sat in gospel missions, trembled under the preaching of God's Word, but died, but died without a thought. You know, friend, tonight God says in Genesis 6 and 3, listen to it, my spirit shall not always strive with man. When this man's door was knocked, 
That, and when that man decided no room, friend, do you want to know what happened? God never knocked on that man's door again. I thank God he gave me the second chance. As a wee nipper, about six or seven, I remember going home and saying to my mother, I says, Mommy, I need to ask the Lord into my heart. My mother says, No, you don't. Shall we got you baptized? You're all right. You don't need to go in for that. Do you want to know, my friend, my mother tonight, I have to say this respectively, my mother tonight closed the door on me. But I remember the second time the knock came. It wasn't between me and my mother. It was between me and the Lord. And can I say to some tonight, to some person sitting in this meeting, now you listen to me. If God is knocking at your heart's door, for goodness sake, let nobody, no matter who it is, close that door in you. Maybe somebody says to me tonight, you know, George, I'd love to be saved. I know I'm not ready. And God has been speaking to my heart. And I know God has been striving. And God has been knocking. But if I open the door, if I do this, if I do that, what's so-and-so going to say? Listen, it doesn't matter what so-and-so says. What's my workmates going to say? What's my mommy going to say? What's my daddy going to say? What's the husband going to say? I'll tell you something now, friend. doesn't matter what they say. The only thing that matters is what you say and what you decide. You see, friend, tonight, the warning of the innkeeper tonight is this. Once his door was knocked, it was only knocked the once. It was only knocked the once. And tonight, friend of God, the Holy Ghost is knocking upon your heart tonight, and you're troubled about your sin, and you're afraid of death and friend, you're afraid of meeting God. I can tell you tonight, that's God, the Holy Spirit, troubling your soul. But friend, tonight, listen to me. As I bring this meeting now to a close, tell me, what about you? What about you? Tonight, tonight you have the innkeeper's part to play. Tonight you have the decision to make. And friend, tonight to them, to them tonight who will decide, Christ will come in. He will. And he'll make you a new person. Boys, he will. The 26th of August, 1985, was the night when I opened my heart's door. I love that wee hymn. You sing it here, don't you? What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I love that hymn. There's a bit of a bounce to it as well, isn't there? I remember preaching one night down, oh, way down in County Calvin, Leitrim, Bother, you know. And this wee woman was playing the organ. And I just playing that hymn. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. But you played it to the timing of the funeral march. You know, nothing kills a meeting like a dead organist. Did you know that? Fergus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fergus is good. He is. He, he's good. Most of the time. <laughs> but you know, friend, I can tell you tonight. Listen, here's a wee word of testimony. Nobody changes the life like Christ. Nobody satisfies only Him. Only Him. Friend, I can't understand some Christians walking about like an undertaker who didn't get paid for the last funeral. It does my head in. Listen, we'll live under rejoice about. Glory to God. But my sinner friend, I said, listen, get your eyes to these Christians, for half of them would put you off rather than excite you. Listen, friend, don't you let any old hypocrite put you off. You may say, and rightly so, should I live a better life than that boy? Well, that's so. But listen to me. You're not going to give an account on the judgment day of the way that boy lived. You'll be given an account of what you've done the night the Lord Jesus knocked your heart's door. Friend, can I ask you a wee question tonight? Have you room for him? He died for you. He shed his blood for you. And perhaps, maybe, in this carol service, he knocks upon your door. And friend, tonight, if you hear the knock, you beware, because he may never, never 
Noch een keer. You know, the innkeeper, boys, he tells a sad story, doesn't he? I know in your own mind and I know in your own heart you would say, if I was the innkeeper that night and I knew who was outside the door, it was Mary and Joseph and the baby Lord Jesus in the womb. I know if I had his chance knowing who it was, I would open up my heart, I would open up the innkeeper and bring them in. Would you now? Would you? Because many of you have heard him knocking outside your heart's door and he hasn't been in yet. But listen tonight. Open the heart's door tonight and allow him in. He opened heaven for you by dying on the cross. What about you opening your heart for him? The way him says, have you any room for Jesus? As in grace he calls again, oh, today is time accepted. Listen to the last wee line. Listen to this one now. Tomorrow, to hear it, tomorrow you may call in vain. Let's all bow in a wee word of prayer together. Every head bowed, every eye closed, God's people praying like you never prayed before. Friend, tonight, listen to me, this is serious. This is not between you and me, this is between you and the Lord. You remember now in these closing moments, how he died for you on that cross. How the pain of God's wrath was poured upon him. And tonight, friend, he's outside now. He's outside the door. Your heart is being knocked. And tonight you must decide what you will do. Maybe perhaps through some circumstance, some instant, God has awakened you to your need. Friend, don't deny yourself this opportunity. Open the door for the one who died for you. As you sit tonight with your head bowed and your eyes closed, can I say tonight, if I can be of any help to any person in this meeting, please come and speak to me. I cannot save you. Bertie cannot save you. But we can have the joy to help you. Come tonight. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may be bring forth. Father in heaven, tonight we pray. We pray for such tonight that are outside of Christ. Lord, we pray, have mercy upon them. Give the saving grace. And Lord, may the seeking Savior be found tonight of the seeking sinner, we pray through his name. Amen. Amen. 300. And 57 is our closing hymn, 357. Have you any room for Jesus, he who bore your load of sin? As he knocks and asks admission, sinner, will you let him in? 357, and we'll raise the sing, please, and remain standing for the closing prayer. Thank you.
friends, a tragic thought to think soon will pass God's day of grace. And that's what the closing verse says tonight, room and time now. Now, friends, now give to Jesus, because soon thy heart will be left cold and silent, and the Savior's pleading says, Friend, tonight you come. Come and speak to us. We're here to help you, and may God, by His grace, help you to come this evening. Our Father in heaven, we pray tonight for that Lord gripping sense of conviction of sin, that gripping sense, Lord, tonight of the knocking upon the heart's door, that Lord gripping sense of a troubled soul. And Lord, but most of all, we pray for deciding grace that will make sinners wise and seek the Lord while he may be found. And Father, tonight we pray, as we remain together to fellowship, we pray, Lord, as we fellowship over the cup of tea, Lord, now accept of our thanks for the good things provided. Bless our fellowship together. And Lord, most of all and above all, save the lost, we pray. For we ask it through his precious name. Amen.